how would you describe how maybe the first couple of days are going for you here with the Titans? Fun. First time, you know, playing ball in a long time. It's the game we all love. So the opportunity to come out here and, and just play and learn. Uh, it's just been a lot of fun and getting to know the guys, getting to know the coaches, getting to know the, the offense. Uh, a lot of work to do, but got a lot of good work in the last few days. Is that ultimately like the part of this that's most comfortable, just getting back into the routine of going through the process of getting ready for another football yeah. season? I think we all thrive on, on routines and stuff, you know, and I mean, obviously in the off season we have a routine, but when, when you're in the building all day long in, in a camp environment like this, I feel like you got to just be that much more locked in. You got to be that much more in tune with what everything that's going on. And uh, I think because of that, we're all able to learn so much in such a short amount of time. And I'm just so proud of all the, all the guys, all the new guys in here have handled it and have just gone out there and done their best and uh, executed at a high level. Did you maybe finish on a high note? In <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it was good. Uh, anytime you can end practice on a completion, uh, let alone one, uh, you know, in a well-placed ball like that, when a guy like Josh, uh, who it's been awesome to get to know, and a fellow draft pick to just go up there and grab it, um, feels good. And uh, I always want to end on a completion. How's everything been for you operation-wise, getting in and out of the huddle, you know, being able to end the huddle, you know, regurgitate the, the play call and everything? Good. Yeah. Yesterday was the first time I'd, I've ever I'd ever heard that. You know, I didn't uh, play in a senior bowl or anything, so I'd never had you know the, the mic and the helmet. So I mean, it, it, it goes to the preparation. It goes to the night before, um, going through all the potential plays that could be called, and you know, reciting it, reading it as if it's been recited to you, and then remembering it, and then saying it back to a huddle. That's what all you know the walkthroughs are for. And at, at this point, I'm definitely uh, more comfortable than I was uh, before I got here in that, and just got to keep getting better at it. But uh, we were really smooth with operation and out of the last couple of days, I thought. Accomplishing this is just the start of your journey, but what kind of went through your mind at the start of this about wanting to make a, a good impression on coaches, teammates, everybody around you? I mean, I just, I just was focused on getting better. I mean, I, I didn't know anything getting in here, you know? So, I mean, I'm just trying to do whatever I can to um, do what's asked of me, do what's, uh, to do my job and to do anything I can to, to help the team. And uh, just play quarterback. Peter was talking about the connection that your families have. Um, wonder if that's helped you guys get off to a quick start here. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, it was funny. Um, my grandfather coached Peter, and also when after even uh, Peter's dad was on the team, anytime my grandfather would go to the Chicago area to go recruit, he'd stay at Peter's house, and um, or Peter's father's house, sorry. And when we were going through this process, like pre combine, like during draft prep training. Um, my family had the Skronskis to kind of lean on and to ask questions about how things are going with them. Coincidentally, we signed with the same agency, so we have a lot of the same conversations with the same people there. And I mean, uh, day one of the draft, when Peter went there and day two rolled around, I was like, how, how funny, how coincidental it would be if I end up on the same team. And uh, here we are. So it's pretty funny how all those things come together. Uh, I truly feel everything happens for a reason. Well, you get to know. You get to know these people a little bit pre-draft process, but now that you've been able to be here and around everybody, anything you've learned new or exciting about these people that you, that's different? I mean, I just seeing how much all these dudes love ball is the most exciting thing to me. Uh, that was probably the thing I was most excited for, you know, getting to this level, getting into an environment, getting to a, a building where, you know, everyone's a professional, everyone has any, no one has an excuse to, to not know what's going on, to not know their assignment, assignment, and to just be focused just on ball. They don't got an exam they got to worry about tomorrow. They don't got all these other social life things they got to worry about, especially right now in a rookie minicamp environment. Um, these are the best players of the best. That's why they're here. And uh, I think we all thrive in an environment like that, and I've just been loving it. Is there anything mechanically? So far, working with uh, Tim Kelly and Charles London, what has that back and forth been like, and what have you maybe picked up from them in the early going? It's been great. Coach London is especially, uh, he's been in the game for a long time for a good reason. You know, he's, he's, he's a great coach. He's a great leader of men. I think that, I mean, we have a good dynamic and he's able to explain things in a way that I'm able to easily understand it and I'm able to take the coaching that we talk about in the meeting room onto the field and Coach Kelly too. I mean, I just feel like we got a great group of there, group in there. Um, and these last couple of days, I feel like I've been able to, you know, excel a lot in that room or not excel, but learn a lot and to, um, you know, take the teachings that they've given me and uh, how, how to transfer on the field uh, there, well. Is there anything mechanically or footwork-wise that you've gone over so far that that you've said to yourself, well, well, that's going to be an adjustment that that feels a little different. I'm going to really have to concentrate on that and make a change there. Uh, no, I mean, um, really just focus on you know the operation, the play, and um, I'm sure we'll get more into the specifics of that uh, later. But I mean, it is good that I mean I played in a similar offense in college, so a lot of the track points and a lot of the uh, footwork in, in the run game and in the in the play action is stuff that I'm familiar with. Um, but it's my first time in a 
football team environment like this with, with all pieces going around. So being able to marry your feet with your eyes and getting through progression is uh, it's the first time doing that in, in a while. So uh, um, it's just fun to get out there and, and to be doing that stuff. So most everything feels natural. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm continuing to get, to get working and I, have to, I can improve in all areas um, of my game. But um, just I think my previous experience definitely helped me. But looking to just keep working, keep improving. From a translation standpoint, you operated in a pro-style system at Kentucky that's you know similar to an NFL offense. How much of that has kind of carried over for you here in the early fortune? A uh, good amount. A good amount. I mean, it's there, there's some you you can get you can fall into the traps of uh, this is what we called this at Kentucky, so that's what I want to call it in my mind. You know, you got to erase that. You got to erase everything in the past, and you got to put it in the language of of how we call it. So I mean, that's been the biggest thing for me. You know, some of the formations, like they might call it one thing and I might think of it as one thing and then I gotta be like, no, it's not that. It's not what it was, it's this is what it is. So just keeping to work on that, keep pounding everything and uh, just keep mastering the offense. So which aspects of the offense are transferable at this point? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> a lot, <Okay>. a lot. <laughs> Once the dust settled and you landed here, a lot of draft analysts, they said, you know, your match with Mike Vrabel is, is ideal. Your interaction with them just through the whole process and actually coming here, how has that been? It's been great. I mean, it's been great to get to know Coach. Uh, I'm just doing everything I can at this moment to, to, to gain his trust and to gain the trust of my teammates. But, I mean, um, like I've said, it, it, when, I, when I got asked to come here, I mean, um, I knew that I was going to really enjoy playing for Coach and just looking forward to continuing our relationship and continue to keep working for him. And it, was, it was said that you guys, you know, went through some of the turnovers. And obviously, each one has its own story, but you got the opportunity to explain that. Is that something that was unique to the process for you as far as meeting with coaches? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, that's the most fun part about the whole process is when they pull up the tape of your mistakes, you know. But um, uh, it's, it's always fun talking through those things. Uh, I mean, obviously going to tell them uh, the, the truth, whether it was uh, my fault or if there's other things that played into it. But hey, at the end of the day, it's always on the quarterback. And I know that uh, regardless of what happens, um, the only way I can gain the trust of, of him of my teammates, of, of the fans, is just how I perform on the field. I'm just looking to keep improving there. Did you meet, I may be wrong with this, did you meet Vrabel back when you were a kid going to Patriots training camp? And, yeah. and, and how cool is it now that he's your crazy, is that he's now your head coach? Yeah, we used to live up in North Attleboro, Massachusetts, moved till I was seven. So um, pretty much since I could, I could walk for those few years, I was going to Patriots training camp every year, watching those Patriots teams, watching Coach Vrabel and them practice, and uh, had a like little signed football from him, actually. So I told him that story. It's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, being a Patriots fan growing up, that's just one of the kind of little, little, little wrinkles and all of that. That's pretty cool. Do you still have that ball? Uh, we actually had a house fire um, a few years back and did not make it, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, it's pretty funny. Did you guys know Ryan at all? Tanhill, yeah, he uh, he texted me and um, after I'd get drafted and he reached out and um, he he just wished me luck and he told me that he was there if I if, if I needed something. I haven't been able to meet him in person yet. Uh, I came in here on Friday and I missed him as, as I think he left the locker room right before I can. But really looking forward to working working with him and uh, to just keep improving. And he's a great example for me. The guy who's had an excellent you know decade long career and has been able to make things happen at this level. So I think there's a lot of things I can I can take from him and learn from him. Ryan, dropping in here and learning stuff that's new. You think your transfer from Penn State to Kentucky and kind of learning a new environment there as well might give you a little heads up and on just adjusting to the transformation here? For sure, yeah. I mean, I had uh, essentially four different offensive coordinators in college too. So I think being able to learn different offenses, being able to deal with adversity, being able to deal with transition and um, just you know changes in, in players and coaching staffs and, and people, uh, it's not easy. And I think that the, those those experiences definitely helped me for, for this transition. Well, is that kind of what his with your mentality and how you carry yourself and kind of through the adversity you've been through, even with the draft and everything that happens there, I mean, or is that just always been a part of you, just the way you present yourself and the leadership qualities? I mean, I, I think it's I think it's nature and nurture. I think it's it's just who I am, but it's also a product of, one, the people I didn't have a choice to surround myself with, my family and the, and the way that they uh, raised me, but I guess also just the, the people in my life that I've trusted and put around me. Uh, you, everyone, all your friends, all your people around you are truly an extension of yourself. And I think if you, as long as you, you know, choose those right people, um, and I feel that in this building, every person that I've touched, every person I've talked to, I've realized that they can all make me a better person and a better leader. Um, so I definitely think it's part of who I am, but just keep looking to just keep using the people around me to lean on them to keep getting better. Is it easy for you to like block out the noise? Yeah, yeah. 
Especially. Yeah, I mean, I I wouldn't say like I I block it out. Like you can't not see like the the, the stuff that people say, but you got to take it for what it is, which is meaningless. You know, you focus on what matters. You focus on what you can control, and you kind of just say screw it to everything else. You know, so um, just you know, focus on myself, focus on my craft, focus on the people in this building, um, and just working. A lot of people talked about you as a leader, saying that you have natural leadership. Is that something that you learned, or is that something you were born with? Yeah, I feel like that that question is pretty similar, but it was definitely I feel like how I um, how I was born, um, but also just a product of uh, the people that helped me get here. Well, when you look at the big picture, when you look at the big picture, are you going into this with the mindset that you're competing to be the starter? How do you approach this? I approach this to just get better every day, just get get here and learn. I haven't even touched the tip of the iceberg of of what's to be needed to know here as being, as a quarterback, um, regardless of how today and yesterday went. Um, I got to just keep improving every day, um, putting the past behind me, learning from my mistakes, um, and just continuing to just get better and be the best leader I can be and the best person for this team to help us win as many games as we can. What do you think about number eight? It's a cool number. It's the only reason I picked it. <laughs> I never, I've never had, I've never had a, a you know a firm association to any number, um, but I was given a few options. I was like, it's pretty cool, uh, but yeah. Um, that's all I can say about it. Anybody else wore any other significance behind that? Anybody else wore that number that you admire? Um, the one cool, the one couple cool comparisons actually um, that I, when I when I picked the number that I kind of connected to, um, thinking about like like very successful number eights in the past. I remember actually Coach Franklin in my early days at Penn State. Um, he just thought, like I think he said that just just how I threw the ball a little bit kind of reminded me of Troy Aikman. So I mean, being a multi Super Bowl champion, like that's pretty cool. And then also, I'm from Connecticut, best quarterback from Connecticut all time, Steve Young. He was number eight. So I mean, that's pretty cool. But no real reason behind it. I just thought those were two kind of cool connections. And as far as the bond that comes in with the rookie class, this draft class, these rookies that are here now, is there a special bond as you guys kind of start this journey together? For sure. Yeah. I mean, right now we're all lo uh, looking to use each other to uh, do whatever we can to to help each other you know, earn a spot on this team, earn a role on this team, as well as all the other dudes for tryouts here and the undrafted free agents. Um, but I've been able to spend some time with the other rookies. I really love the group that we have here. Uh, Rand definitely had a, had a um, process for, for who we wanted to bring in here, not, not just as players, but as people. And I feel like all of us um, make a good group and we're going to assimilate really well into this building. Thank you, guys. Oh, uh, good. Um, it's been a lot, obviously, just kind of learning, learning the Titans organization and how to be a Titan. Um, whether it be through practice or meetings or scheme, um, just trying to adjust to this organization the way they do things. But it's been good. It's been a lot, but I'm enjoying it. You know you're going to get work you're in a couple of places. You've been a guard so far? Yeah, yeah. I've been you know, working multiple positions on the inside and the outside. Um, overall, I'm just trying to learn schematically and learn our schemes overall. So I think that helps me for just being able to change around positions and try to help the team in whatever position works. You mentioned that learning scheme overall, but I mean, obviously it's different guard and tackle. How much do you think, you know, your playing experience will allow you to you know, embrace that? Yeah, obviously, you know, I have to be, you know, willing to, to learn new techniques from Coach Haas and everybody and, and just adjusting to new positions and, and new things that I haven't done yet. Um, so it's just a matter of getting reps and just getting time working at that. Peter, how much are you enjoying getting to meet all these people and just kind of get to know them better and everything too? Yeah, it's been really cool just familiarizing myself with the organization. Obviously, the vets haven't been here yet, but getting around the rookies and um, you know meeting the coaching staff and getting around them and, and just really enjoying everybody so far. So that's been awesome. How uh, how you feel to be in the seventy seven? And did you talk to Tyler? I guess to get his uh, blessing on that. Yes, I did. Yes, he did. He did give me the blessing. Um, obviously, I wore seventy seven in college, so obviously nice to keep it consistent and. Uh, Obviously, big shoes to fill with, with Taylor having been, been such a great player for this franchise. So, um, just yeah. What did he say about it when you asked him? He just said he was obviously really nice about it. He said he didn't, you know, just felt obviously an, an easy yes for him. So it was, uh, he's very, very nice about it and cool. And he obviously he did great things for another number 77. So, is it uh, tough at all, Peter? I mean, you played tackle so much in college. And as you mentioned, kind of moving back and forth, is it hard kind of? learning two spots in a, in a new scheme, you know, as you, as you go to the NFL. Yeah, I think that's why you kind of have to learn things conceptually and, and from a big picture standpoint in terms of what we're trying to do in general um, on a play. And that helps you be able to just sort of move out and then simultaneously, especially with just schematic stuff and then techni techniques stuff, you just have to drill it and, and get the reps and you'll get it.
the Orsa language like in regards to the offense and such and compared to what you had in college? Yeah, obviously it's totally different and, um, you know, every, everyone's got different terminology, obviously. And so that's obviously a challenging thing, just kind of memorizing it and, you know, kind of rewiring your brain to, to fire on certain things and, and know what the code words mean. So just a matter of just getting it memorized. Yeah, given the fact that you are the first round pick, do you kind of take it upon yourself to be the leader out there uh, with those guys out on the field? You know, I think, um, you know, as Coach Vrabel said, everyone is, is sort of equal once we get here. And I don't think, you know, draft position really means something once you step on that field. You've got to earn it just like everyone else does. Um, so, you know, I can't say I'm a leader without doing what I need to do on and off the field. So I think that's just my biggest priority right now is just earning my earning the respect of my teammates on the field and off the field. Kind of along those lines, Peter, what are you looking to show here in the next few days? Yeah, I'll just sort of reiterate what I said. I mean, just just earning the respect of my teammates by doing everything I need to do, you know, in, in the meeting room, on the field, off the field. So I think I just kind of have to earn my way just like anyone else. What's uh, your early interaction been like with, with Will Levis and, uh, and what did you maybe see from him as far as how he handles the huddle, just his chatter uh, on the field? Yeah, yeah, Will's been great. Obviously, we've, we've connected so far. We have a, a family connection, um, obviously, just – for me, just having been here only two days, it's just been a lot of just working with O-line and stuff, but obviously being great to be around Will, and you can tell he works really hard and is really prepared. Um, so really impressed with him. Did you walk us through that family his, So his grandfather, his name's Dave Kelly, was my dad's defensive line coach at when he played at Yale. Peter, did it bother you when people would talk about you ahead of the draft about he's a, he's a good tackle, but he'd be a better guard when you had played tackle in college? Yeah, you know, I think at some point that may have bothered me, but, you know, now that I'm on a team, I'm really just trying to help a team in any way I can. And I think I said that from the beginning in terms of I'll play wherever anyone needs me to play. Um, and obviously I think I can be versatile in that sense with tackle and guard. But, you know, now that I'm tight and I'm just really trying to help the team. Do you ever consider the fact that as far as the NFL is concerned, tackles are usually valued higher than guards? Yeah, I think I think that's been kind of a narrative. Obviously, I don't think it's fair to say that guard is like an easy position. Um, obviously, it's, there's a lot of really, really good interior players out there, and guard's difficult too. So, in terms of difficulty, difficulty level, I can't say that maybe one's greater than the other. But I know obviously there's a value discrepancy, like a discrepancy there. But is there also a value though that you can play both whenever you need to? Uh, yeah, I think for any anyone on the team, Coach Coach Rabel preaches versatility. I think, especially on a line, that's obviously super value with fundamentals. Um, so just trying to be versatile, I think there's always value in that, even on any position on that team. Good. Appreciate it. Good. Thanks, Thanks guys. You. Thank you. Uh, catch you made to uh, end the workouts. That kind of put an exclamation point on things for you, like impression. Um, I mean, I'm just trying to do all the right things, you know, be in the right spots at the right times, um, and, you know, try to make the quarterback look good. That's all I can ask for. Um, just show great effort. and. Um, yeah, so. How was the ball placement? Oh, it was pretty darn good, I'd say. Um, it was pretty cool. He came down and celebrated with me. That was pretty cool. How do you like Will and how important is the already to start to build that chemistry here right out of the gate? Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, you know, all, all the rookies here, everybody here, we're just trying to work together, um, you know, build relationships, uh, you know, and try to have something that'll last a long time. So. How would you describe kind of the last couple of days trying to build that chemistry? And yeah. Um, Coach Rams, you know, it, it, he always says, like, you, we have so many things to worry about, um, you know, install and doing the right things and everything, but um, getting to know one, each, one, one another, uh, that's the biggest thing. And like I said, just build those relationships. How excited are you to have the opportunity? Because, you know, they, they stress versatility here, but to be used in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, listen, I'm just going to do – I'm going to try to do any, everything the coaches ask for. Um, and try to find a role, you know, on special teams and anywhere I can on offense. But is it exciting to know that, you know, they have you in mind to have so many different roles on the team? Of course, yeah, it's exciting. Um, I'm just going to try to contribute anywhere I can. How much H-back slash fullback stuff did you do at Cincinnati? That's something I really got into my last season there, um, kind of in the I formation. Uh, I feel pretty comfortable with it. I just got to get my pads down. So I'm, I'm taller, but... Um, yeah, I feel pretty comfortable. Yeah, so is, is that a challenge for you? Just the simple fact that you are 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, being able to get 
good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just something I always have to think of for sure. Has it been kind of nice with your coach at Cincinnati, Luke Fickle, and Braves having that connection and you prior knowing a little bit about Coach Brable and what he expects out of his players? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, obviously they both stress um, a lot on effort and attitude. Um, and I've said this, you know, many times in the past already, but um, it was kind of a, it was a, it was a comfortable feeling um, knowing that they believe in the same things and coming in, I knew I was going to have some challenges and, you know, they've, they've gotten on me plenty of times, but, um, you know, just, just showing great effort. That's my biggest thing right now. There's a lot of mistakes happening um, from myself and um, just showing them that, you know I mean? I'm finishing to the ball and everything. First so you guys have been on the field in a long time and what's it been like, you know, getting the pace, getting the conditioning back and how you feel like as a team you guys have done it. Has it been a lot early? Um, I think we've been doing pretty good for me. I mean, I, I swept like a pig. Um, and I, I was running a bunch beforehand, but it's hard to get in football shape without playing football. So, um, yeah, it's been fun. What's the conversation like in the locker room when you come back in there? And like you said, you're sweating. Probably a lot of other guys working up a – Pretty good sweat here early on. Mm-hmm. Um, get in the training room, man. Uh, you get your, you got to have healthy bodies. You know, what I mean, not not for tomorrow, but for three weeks from now. So. When it comes to the offense and learning that terminology and concepts, how similar, how different <coughs> is it for you? Yeah, um, football is football at the end of the day. Um, but like you said, it's terminology. It's different words, and it's the right words. Um, you know, they don't want to hear something that the terminology I use at UC. They want to hear what they say. Um, so it's been a little bit of a challenge, but that's every rookie or across the league. So, what have your impressions been so far of Will? Just kind of getting to know him. What kind of guy he's he's like? Uh, he's a pretty good dude. Um, I like him a lot. Uh, we're just going to keep building that chemistry um, throughout uh, rookie mini camp, OTAs, and then so on. So, did you know him at all coming in here? Mm-mm. No, just met him. So, you got to get through rookie camp first. But you guys anxious to? start practicing with the veterans next week and have you met some guys and have they welcomed you to town? Um, yeah, I met, yeah, I met a couple guys. Um, Rig and Thomas are in there and I met Chig and all, all the guys in my room. Um, I'm excited to get to work with them, but like you said, one day at a time, man. That's just what we got to focus on for now. With your coaching staff, you know, your, your coach Tony Dews, he played the position. Uh, the same one that, that you play. How, how has that been? This is his first year uh, coaching the tight end. Yeah, it's been good. Um, stresses a lot on the details. Um, and that's something, you know, I had a coaching change at UC um, in my fifth year there. And my second coach, he was really big on the details. And he, like I've been saying, knowing the right wording. Um, uh, so, yeah, it's been good. It's been fun. I like him a lot. So looking forward to you know what the future holds. Josh, that's a pretty young room in there. Uh, does it feel like there's plenty of opportunity uh, for those who uh, step up and seize it? Um, of course, but I mean, you have to earn it. Um, and like I said earlier, I, I'm just going to try to come in every day, um, work my butt off and, you know, hopefully on Sundays I, I, I can contribute. Appreciate you. Nice Thank you guys. Hey, Got a couple of plays where you're able to kind of turn on the uh, jet pack there. How did it feel to get out in the open field and make some plays? It felt good, but you know you got to give all the credit to O line, the big boys that's blocking for you. So it felt good though. How you feel the first couple of days have gone, and what kind of impression you want to make here right out of the gate? Um, it's just a blessing to be a part of the team, and um, it feel it feel good to be you know coming from where I come from. I'm on the NFL team now, so it's I'm I'm super excited. It's not a lot of time, obviously, that you've gotten to spend here just yet, but what's it been like to get to know your fellow rookies and some of the tryout guys that they're in? Yeah, all the guys that I came and encountered with, they all great. Um, also, every coach, you know, they demand a lot out of you, but uh, it's a great organization, great people. What did you think when you saw Saints week one in New Orleans? Uh, that's so far away, so I just got to, you know, I'm just taking one day at a time. Tosje, can you, can you maybe, like, Clear up. I know we probably asked you about the, the knee before, but that, that unusual report that said you actually maybe didn't have an ACL in one knee—is that is that actually mm-hmm. true? And and how do you deal with that? I guess. Um, I was out there. I did everything, so I feel perfectly fine. Ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm healthy. Is it a situation where you just compensate with the strength of everything else around the knee? No, nah, I'm healthy. 
You're healthy, but do do you have an ACL in that knee? I am healthy. <laughs> you're, you're you're on this team now, but when you first got here, did you did you peek around the locker room, see where guys' lockers are? Did you see did you see Derek's? Oh uh, yeah, me and Derek, we actually uh, locker mates. He like right to the I'm on the, he on the right side of me, so yeah, he, we locker mates. I can't wait till he get here so we can meet each other. You talk to him at all? No, I didn't. I did. Roger, what's the uh, language been like in regards to learning a new offense compared to what you learned in college? Um, it's a learning process, of course, but um, just take a lot of time with myself and with my coach, uh, uh, just going over everything. So it, it's been it's been smooth. It's been pretty smooth. You come into the league feeling uh, probably like everybody that you got something to prove, uh, and is that kind of has what driven you throughout your playing career? Um, I just want to make the most out of my opportunity, however it comes. Um, it's just about like taking what you get and also just living in the moment, taking, making the most out of the opportunity. Are there any particular moments, you know, through these couple of days where you've done something you're like, yeah, that's, that's why I'm here. Uh, I really can't think about it. Then it's, it's early. It's super early. It's super early. Is there a frustration level with how much people ask you about your knee, even though you were healthy last season as far as playing? Uh, you know, that, I guess that's the question that's going to always pop up. But uh, like I said, man, I'm here. And, like, they had a lot of faith in me to get give me where they got me at. So, like, I'm healthy, and they know I'm healthy. And I, you know, did uh, well these last past two days. Okay, did you know Don Terrell? I did. So, look, I, I kind of I kinda knew him, but I, ain't, I, knew, I knew he went to Tulane. I had reached out to him probably, like, uh, a few months ago. But, uh, yeah, I reached out to him. We was talking, you know, he – uh. Took the big brother role. He gave me he gave me some advice over the phone and stuff like that. So he's I think he's a great guy. I just I never I never seen him in person. Like right here, I never uh, like reacted with uh, just talked to him in person. Anything that you can tell us that he kind of gave you advice on? Just anything basic. Um, just taking the next step and you know the do's and the don'ts and stuff like that. That's it. What was it like in your career at Tulane? You battled your injuries and then you have the senior year that you have. Mm -hmm. You guys win all those games and we all know how the season finished. What's the whole process like? Um, it, it was rough at first, but um, we got it on board at the end. And also, <clears throat> the biggest thing about that is um, like the the relationships I built, and also the memories that I built. Like all those games, at the end of the day, they matter because they matter to the program. We're gonna forever be in history. But like those relationships, and and like I said, the memories that that that'll never leave. And like when we come back, like twenty five years from now, we're gonna have a whole bunch to talk about. How much did your, your how much did your performance in the bowl game against Southern Cal kind of put you on the map in, in terms of being a prospect in your life? Um, it, it, it did a lot, but uh, I'm I, I'm not in their mind, so I don't really know. How nice is it for you to have this experience now, like not focused on college, not focused on a draft, no schoolwork, just football all the time? Like, lately I've been praying a lot. Like, I've been praying, and, I, and, the, and the main thing I like, I try to start and I finish with just like how thankful I am for being here, being a part of an NFL organization. Because I, I can think back like two people, three people from where I'm from only got, got that opportunity. And like, I'm probably like the, the fourth or, or the second one that got it. So like, I'm, you know, I'm super blessed and I'm super appreciative. Watching your highlights, it seems like your ability <coughs> to, to glide and then bounce mm -hmm. is, is what kind of makes you unique. Mm -hmm. You feel like that that's kind of an accurate way to put it? Um, nah, because uh, it's just like whatever I see and whatever I feel at the, at the time. Um, this this program is big on versatility. So like um, at, at Tulane, I, w I ain't get that much, but uh, like I'm I'm getting comfortable with it, taking one day at a time. What do you kind of have to work on to, to get comfortable there? But uh, everything. We ain't trying to be average. We ain't trying to be good. We trying to be great. What was the Senior Bowl week like for you? You go down there and just show out. I mean, mm -hmm. great for your confidence. Great for everything, right? Yeah, you, you hit it on the head. Great for your confidence. Great for everything. Um, like I said, it was like I I be like trying to live in the moment because it's a lot of things that. My people ain't experience that I'm experiencing, so like I just be trying to live in the moment, and make the most out of my opportunity. Were you able to build some relationships there with coaches? I, Charles London was there, obviously. Uh -huh. Braves was there. Uh -huh. Charles, Charles London, uh, and also Pete. I mean Pat. I'm sorry, Pat. He play, he, he was with the Jets. Um, yeah, those relationships and uh, not and I seen uh, Ch Coach Charles. He was smiling like he yeah. So we built we built a good relationship over there. How's that you? 
getting to experience things people haven't. I'm sorry, I said you say you, you reference, you know, getting to experience things before you're from where you're from. Having. So yeah, it's like um everybody don't get the opportunity. Like it's a, it got a lot of people that play sports, but they didn't take it to the college level. They didn't take it to the NFL level. And like I'm just here living out my dream and also their dreams too. Did you always feel like you were gonna make it at this level? Uh, to be honest, I ain't. I don't even be thinking that far. I just be. I never really thought that far. So that's why I'm like, I'm super, super excited. When did you think this could be a possibility then? Uh, the NFL. The NFL. I remember I had did it like this running in high school. Like I broke like five tackles. I'm like, man, I want to go to the league. And like, <laughs> and like, uh, it's so like fast forward. Now I'm here. So like, it's it's amazing. How old were you then in high school? Ooh. 14, 15, what about 15? Sure. About 15 to 16? Like no older than that, probably. Yeah, 15, 16. So the Saints were your team growing up, right? Mm -hmm. what, who was the running back kind of you looked up to? You know my favorite running back. I bet you know who I said it was. Anybody know? There we go. There we go. Not anywhere close. Well, yeah, no. Saints, yeah. Yeah, he's probably the same. Yeah, yeah, Reggie Bush. I got my uh my first year uh, uh Lily. I was number 25. He was my favorite running back. What do you like about his style? Like how he can move and, you know, set people up and score touchdowns. Good job. Oh. Everybody doing good? Yep. Yes. Everybody doing good? It's good to see you. Yes, sir. So, Colton, oh. how's it been getting through these first couple days uh, on the inside and getting to see uh, everything from this side of the uh, building? Um. It's been it's been awesome. Um, I've I've had a really good time, you know, being able to dive completely into football, um, and not have to worry about you know classes or, or something else, you know, coming up. I'm not even have to worry about where I'm going to eat at. I, I mean, we eat right in there, so it, it it's kind of it's it's really awesome to to see the um, the level of um, professionalism um, that can come with playing this game, and it, I've I've had a great time. Did you let your stage up. At home for this, and if so, how was the commute into that? Um, uh, no sir, uh, no sir. Well, we stay, we're staying at uh, in a hotel out here, right down the street. Um, um, I'm not sure when I'll be able to stay at home, but you know, the when I came up here, it wasn't it wasn't that bad. About 20 minutes, 25 minutes. So you take a little spill on the, on the <laughs> ladder there. Uh, what happened, and what'd you hear from Braves? Uh, you know, uh, the, my body was moving faster than my mind. Um, it's, I, I had a lot of adrenaline going. Um, and. You know, I'd be lying if that if I said that was the first time I've ever done that. Um, and I'm sure it's not going to be the last time. Uh, um, but you know, it, it's a great thing that I can look at and, and know that I'm not where I need to be at yet. And um, and, and just I can keep getting better. You know, look, look, looking at doing things like that, I can just keep getting better. What did coach say? Uh, coach Vrabel, he was he just you know kind of looked at me and and, and and you know he just moved on because you know he <laughs> he knows it happens. You know, I'm a rookie, so it, it is what it is. Um, he just moved on. What is your relationship? coaches so far have you settled in and gotten to know the guys pretty well uh, uh yes sir i've i've got to know um especially the receivers coaches re uh, really well um uh, mr rob moore coach rob moore and uh kb um i'm really meshing with them guys and and, and it's cool to see uh coach Vrabel and, and the way he um you know builds relationships with he, he he wants us as players to build relationships with everybody in the building now um, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's really cool. We're all meshing pretty well, and uh, you know there hadn't been no problems. What's Speaking of relationships, like? what's it been like working with Will Levis and you guys getting to know each other, not only as people but as you know quarterback receiver combo? Oh, definitely. Uh, Will's a Will's a Will's a great dude. Um, I'm actually rooming with him in uh in the in the hotel, and um, I'm kind of scared to touch the remote because he was the first one in there. And he was just, he was looking at his iPad and he was studying plays and, and our remote hasn't moved. So uh, uh, he's a, he's a very intense guy. And, um, you know, he's, he, he really wants to um, make the most out of this opportunity he's been given. So yeah, far, so and when you guys are in the room, like, have you gone over different things with him or yeah. is he mostly studying on his own? Definitely. No, he, um, the first night we were in the hotel was me, him and Josh uh, Wiley, uh, the tight end. Um, we were up there going through plays. Um, if we had questions, we'd ask him. Um, and, and, you know, just kind of back and forth banter over the playbook and everything Not like that. Not many people from UT Martin have found yourself in this situation. Do you feel like you have something uh, to prove now that you're in the NFL? Um, uh, yes, sir. Um, and it's not necessarily um, because I'm from UT Martin. Um, uh, you know, let me let me backtrack. Yeah, yes. Um, definitely being from UT Martin has has made me think that I have something to prove and, um, and, and putting – UT Martin on the map is one of my biggest goals, um, and, and and bringing a lot of um, 
how do I put this? Uh, putting a spotlight on small schools and, and and letting people see that we have talent too is 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 a, a huge goal for me, and um and it's really what what drives me right now. You've so yes. A lot of, um, a big response from all the people locally here in Lebanon. How special has that been for you to kind of see all the people supporting you? Um, it it's been awesome. Uh, I, I've said it I've said it a couple of times, but you know when when you're um when you're wanted and, and when you're supported by people you don't even know. Um, it, it's really, it's really great, and I, I cherish that. And you know, it's it's really a blessing to uh, to to have that in my life, you know, right now. Because I know, um, just as quick as it came, it can leave. And uh, you know, I'm just I'm just thankful for that, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Has there, has there been a big difference, Colton? I know, uh, as you said, you played at a smaller school in UT Martin. I mean, has there been a moment of like, wow, these guys are a little bit different so far, or, or do you feel pretty comfortable? Um, yeah, there's definitely, uh, it's there's definitely, you know. A higher level of athleticism, but you know, I the, the type of guy I am at practice and the type of you know program that Coach Simp had, um, it was it was highly intensive. Uh, it, my, it was it was a high intense, you know. Uh, <laughs> I'm stumped right now. Yeah, high intensity practices in in Martin, um, and and you know, I just I go hard every day and I try to, you know, get the most out of not only me but my my teammates as well. So, um, yes, there's a there's a there's a difference in athleticism, of course, because it's it's professional. But the, you know the way that we we go about it, it's been the same. Your uh, little boy in you um, now at an NFL camp. But what what would that little boy from 15 years ago or so think about you being here? Um, I I'd, I'd like to say he'd be happy, you know, um, and and he'd he'd realize that uh you know this is a dream come true, um, and and it, um. This is just the start, and I want I want to continue to make that you know that younger self happy what as I keep going. The anxiety level like coming in here for the first time, meeting new teammates, meeting coaches, wanting to make a good impression, trying to learn the playbook. I mean, and is it overwhelming sometimes at, at points? Um, it's it's not it's not too overwhelming. Um, you know the coaches, Coach Vrabel and um and um you know our coordinator uh, Tim Kelly, they do they've done a really good job about you know scheduling meeting times and and then just being open and honest with us and answering questions. So. They've they've taken the um, anxiety level and they brought it down to you know, because um, they know we're humans and they know we're going to make mistakes and it, it's going to take us a little bit as rookies to really grasp the concepts that that they're throwing at us. Um, um, so they they've they've kind of they've really helped us you know learn and it hasn't been too um, anxiety ridden. You mentioned mistakes, but you were you know after the fall early you came back later and it, with that nice catch from Well and he came down to celebrate with you. How nice to be able to to respond in the same practice like that. Um, definitely. Uh, I have a coach um, that, that helped me out in Martin. I used to be a perfectionist um, and we, we uh, he came up with this thing called one snap and clear. So whatever it is you do um, in the past, uh, you just got to let it go. And the next play is the next play. I mean, that's what you're focused on. You're not really thinking about, you know, that trip or that drop or, you know, that good play, you know, which it's, it's in the past and you make another one, you know. Along those lines, you did have a couple opportunities to showcase your size and your speed. Is that what you're trying to showcase uh, being here, kind of the, what you bring to the table? Uh, uh, yes, sir. I think I, I bring that to the table, but I'm just trying to, you know, carve out, carve out, you know, my position on this team through hard work and, and just trusting the coach's plans for me, um, you know, being being available to them, um, being able to be versatile and, and move in and out wherever they need me. So um, I'd definitely like to showcase that, but at the same time, um, I'm just, I'm here to, Help this team get better and help this team win win games. There was a picture of uh, you guys, some of you guys at Top Golf the other night. Who's got the best golf swing? Ooh, um, it's definitely between uh, 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 Will and Will, Will and um, Josh. Josh can freaking smoke a golf ball. He, that dude, he gets all all six seven of them into a golf ball. He he freaking he he can he can rope a golf ball. But I'd say the most consistent, you know, it. This might give me a trouble, but it'd probably be Josh. He was smoking the ball, you know. I was impressed with him. Um, it definitely wasn't me. I sliced the ball a lot. I, anytime I put a driver in my hand, the ball, the golf ball, just instantly goes, you know, to the right. So, but uh, now golf, top golf was a fun. It was a good, uh, good, um, good outing. Thank y'all. Thank you guys. How'd they do, Teresa? Who? Well, the guys you just got done talking to for 40 well, they, minutes. They, they don't sound like rookies, That's who. so uh, they came in prepared. We spent a lot of time on media development. <laughs> I appreciate that. Colton, Colton showed personality. You'll hate it. Oh, <laughs>
and you need to get Will Levis a new signed ball. You just asked him about the bad plays and not all the good ones he had either. Uh, Go ahead, Teresa. Well, that I asked him about the good play, so I'll, I'll ask you. How, how do you like the way the, the, the seventh-round rookie, he trips early but comes back and makes a nice catch? Yeah, I mean, we're, tell me anybody that hasn't fallen in, in, uh, in football or going through a drill or a ladder. It's, you know, I think that there's, you know, what our coach is doing, I was explaining that on that drill is, you know, we only have so much time on individual. And so as a coach, you're trying to combine skills, right, in different positions to try to get as much time out of the, the you know, schedule that I allocate for individual. And that's an example of just combining drills where, you know, they're trying to drop step, you know, catch the ball, drop step, you know, work, work some foot movement, um, you know, take on a defender, essentially, that maybe working that you wouldn't work, work a stiff arm, you know, the ball security, um, you know, from the other side and then coming off the end of the ladder and then just being able to burst and, you know, make a move. So I think that that was a situation where Colton, you know, probably just got caught up, you know, going too fast. And that's the thing I explained to the coaches is when, when you are combining different, um, you know, skills or fundamentals is that you make sure that the player understands that, you know, you're not in a big rush. Um, but well, we do a lot of that throughout the different, you know, Positions. How do you like the play that ended it, Mike, with, with two of your key guys kind of leaving and, and finishing everything on a nice note? Well, I would tell you that that probably, um, you know, again, the result was good. And there was a lot of great decisions, uh, which we ask our quarterback uh, to be able to do. Um, but, you know, that, that, that may not end as well with some other players um, when the veterans come in an OTA. So, Again, it was great by Josh to be able to go. I think we'll just tell Will that, you know, we got to be careful when we throw it into a team meeting. Um, but it was a great job by Josh being able to track it and, um, you know, ultimately end up with the catch. Cole, how's the group handled <clears throat> the atmosphere, the schedule? This generation? Yeah, I think I think good. You know what I mean? I think that they and you know, our coaches did a nice job of having the draft guys ready, you know, being able to communicate uh, with them uh, through Zoom and the guys that we had signed. You know, the, the, you know, those guys that we drafted to communicate with them, bringing them in here, getting them ready. Um, practice, the, you know, we were able to function. You know, we had the one football on the ground on the first play. Um, happy to report that in your absence, there wasn't any yesterday. You'll have to take my word for it, um, which is good. You know, I mean, the offensive, the receivers are getting lined up for the most part. You know, they're not having to flip flop and, and go to the wrong side. A um, lot of cool communication from defense. So those are the things that I think are important uh, just in a shorter amount of time. And then the development and, you know, progression and the techniques will, will start to come. When you look at a guy like Caleb Murphy, you know, so productive at Ferris State, but he may not have gotten that detailed coaching. Like how do you weigh out where you think he's going to be and just measure his progress each day? Well, I don't think that any of us want to try to predict where he may be. I think we try to have a vision of where they can work and where – you know, what they can handle and what what they can do on, you know, fourth down. You know, as as a young player, especially an undrafted one that's a, you know, an edge rusher or outside linebacker, inside linebacker, safety, tight end, running back. You know, the first place for you to make an impact on this football team is going to be special teams. And uh, you know, he's working hard at that, and as well as, you know, Thomas Rush. Um, you know, so that's something that we'll certainly have to evaluate is where they can help us on special teams and how quickly. You know, they develop an outside linebacker. What did you like about Murphy, you know, to bring him in here? Well, he's a highly productive player, and you're looking for, you know, some length and some production, you know, skill set uh, that could potentially translate, um, you know, to, to playing on the edge of in, in National Football League. What are some of the things you try to – the building blocks of things you try to establish with the group when they come in here for the first weekend? I think that's the biggest thing is that they, they understand – you know, how we want to do things and, and how we, you know, want to function, you know, from a conditioning level. I think that's the biggest thing. Also, you know, being willing to, to make mistakes and study, but the ability for them to communicate with their coaches, their teammates, and this is a long process. You know, we believe in making connections, you know, allow us to, to coach these guys and figure out what's best. Um, and so I think we're off to a good start. You know, we want them to be respectful of the people in the building. We want them to be accountable to where they're supposed to be. We want them to be accountable to, to their teammates that they know what to do or at least are putting the effort in to know what to do. Those, those are things I think are important. Will said that 
a lot of what he ran in Kentucky, even though it may be called something different here, translates pretty well. How much can that help accelerate the learning curve for a quarterback coming in? Well, I think everything's different. The defenses are going to be much different. So if there's, you know, a lot of the plays, when you look throughout the league, you look in college, the plays are similar. You know, there's going to be some teams, you know, every team is going to have some things that are a little different and there may be some scheme plays or you know, personnels that are different. But there's a lot of carryover from offenses and defenses. But um, for, for a quarterback, a young quarterback, it, it's going to be the defensive looks. It's going to be the disguises. It's going to be the different rolled coverages, some of the different fronts that you're going to have to handle. So he, he may have um, somewhat of a working knowledge of the concept of the play. Pretty sure it's going to be called something different here, but then the defenses that he'll be going against will, will be much different than some of the looks that he got in college. What's the clock for him and for these guys on terminolo t terminology? He, I think he said, uh, when, when are they back? Three, the, three the, weeks? the clock? No, when do you want them to like have it down? What's the next? expectation? As soon as possible, right? As soon as possible, knowing that that's going to be different for each position. You know, there's a lot more on the quarterback's plate. There's a lot more on the center's plate <clears throat> as opposed to, you know, other positions. Um, defensively, there's a lot more on a safety's plate and inside linebacker's plate than there would be on an interior, you know, talking about TK or, you know, Shaquille. Um, but these guys will be right in here with our vets on Monday. Um, you know, we try to, you know, have a plan together for them, a meeting schedule where there's some time where they do meet with the vets so that we can continue to, you know, go where we were with the installation with our veteran players. But then in the afternoons, um, there'll be some time for just the, the rookies to, to get caught up. Is there an order for Will? Like you go first down, first down, second down terminology first or? or well, I think for, for any any player, and that's not going to change whether for Will, it's going to be the the offense. It's going to be where we're coming out, <clears throat> you know, where we are when we come out of this, um, this three-day camp, um, where our veterans are, which is going to be – you know, two weeks ahead of that, and then um, then where you pick up back with the rookie. So, you know, like we tell them, we'll give them as much as they can handle, and if, if they're able to, to process that information, then we'll move along quicker. But, you know, it's based on the individual. How much did you guys with a kicker that, that you signed as an undrafted free agent, and how did you, did, you, did you think he looked the last two days kicking the ball? Well, I thought there were some swings that were pretty good. I thought he rushed the, the second one, um, and then – was able to recover nicely. The the one thing, and and I probably didn't realize this before, but there's a operation to going out there, and these guys have just met each other from the snap to the hold to the kick, and so when we when they're practicing it, they're practicing it in the tempo that it's going to be required to go out there in the game, not snap it, catch it spin the laces, step up and kick. So I, there is a little bit of leeway for new guys. And I think I have, having talked to some kickers, it's like, man, well, Kern was the holder for so long and it was just natural. And then the work that, that Stoney put in, you know, last year just to get proficient at that. So it, it's hard to evaluate a kicker's performance and he missed some today, Trey missed some today. Um, but at least they're pushing the envelope of, getting the timing, the operation, and making sure that it's not just going through the motions and that he can probably be, you know, more more accurate. And I, and I appreciate that. Coach, with you being somebody who's played just a short time ago, uh, do it you – wasn't that, It do wasn't you, that recent ago, <laughs> Kayla. Do you uh, ever kind of sit down with these guys before camp starts? And I know a lot of these guys are probably overwhelmed, especially coming from maybe some of the smaller schools, and just kind of have a chat with them about that and how to – Embrace this there were some th Thursday night. There were some faces that that looked like they were going to take on the the world. I said, guys, we need to we need to all take a deep breath and we need to relax and we need to tell some jokes and we need to just get to know each other. So we had a had a group introduction. I told them to take a couple minutes and learn learn everybody in their position, learn something about their coach, and then we had a contest and. Each position group got up and introduced another player or introduced a position coach. And as fate would have it, the specialists won. They knew the most information. And I said, you know why? Because they don't have a playbook. They're not worried about plays. They're not worried about where to line up, 
where to, to go and cover three or where to throw the ball or which way to run. So apparently they just have a lot of time to, to get to know each other. And, it, and it's a good reminder that you have to figure out what's important. And I think right now, getting to know your teammates, getting to know your coaches, getting to know the staff in this building is probably more important than where Will Levis is and his understanding of our offense. Is what's up? having a good joke? They, they have, I think the, the jokes are good. The biggest thing is the delivery. <laughs> so they get up and they're nervous and it's like, because I'm getting ready. I, part of this is my job is to prepare them for when the veterans get here and they have to stand up and you know, say where they're from and the signing bonus. And, you know, I reminded them that my signing bonus was $286,000 in 1997. And um, times have changed clearly from, from some of the numbers, but, um, you know, they had to tell a joke. They get, so I, they, I, we have them practice in front of the rookies um, because when the vets get here, that's all the stuff that they're going to have to do. What's it like getting Peter, finding where Peter Skronsky is most comfortable and maybe what do you see from him just right out of the gate as far as how he moves? And yeah, hey, the real, um, good, good, good mover, thick, sturdy. Um, you know, I think that he can, you know, handle the installation. He's been able to handle – you know, more than one position. And if we didn't feel like, you know, he could handle that, um, then we wouldn't do it. But um, certainly I wouldn't have a problem, you know, working him at either guard or tackle spot. And, you know, we'll see where he progresses and see how he looks when, when everybody else gets here. Is it hard to evaluate that about a guy like Peter who's a rookie when they don't practice like they did when you played with all the pads and the practices and the hitting and all that kind of stuff? I don't think – we've talked about our ability to – um, the biggest thing for offensive linemen in the spring is going to be their conditioning level to play it, the manner in which we want to play. You know, I mean, we're, we're asking these guys to, to finish longer than the guy with the ball. So that's a big change. And the, some of the techniques that are going to be different. It's hard to evaluate overall performance of an offensive or defensive lineman in the spring without the pads. But what we can do is we can evaluate their conditioning, and their ability to change things in their set or to determine the way that we want to run off the football or do, do different things like that. So um, that's what we can try to focus on as an offensive or defensive lineman. What's up with Kiaris? Uh, just working through some same things. We'll see where he's at and our ability to continue to try to add him to our roster. How satisfied have you been with the progression that Colton has shown in the last uh, two days? Well, I think all of them, you know, and it was good to see – Colton finished uh, that team drill or seven on seven drill strong. We fought through some contact. Um, and the one thing that was nice with that, you know, in breaking route, it wasn't that he cut it off short. He got contacted, was still able to fight through some contact, get to his depth, and which allowed the, the timing of the route to, to develop you know, where the quarterback could hit him. And he also caught the ball out in front of his body, which we know is so critical with contested catches and the technique, and that's what, something that we asked some of these guys to do after yesterday was instead of letting it get into their body and live in this comfort zone is to get out of their comfort zone, start fighting to catch the ball out in front of your body because it's contested, uh, and the closer we let it get to our body, the more chance that it has to be incomplete or worse volleyball off the shoulder pad into safety that's standing there. So that was good to see him be able to do some of those things we talked about. and and. Trying to make it so where these guys, we're going to coach mistakes and we're going to demand effort, right? Mistakes are going to happen. Can we coach them through the mistake? Can they make a mistake, take the coaching, correct it, come back? Those are all the things that we evaluate. And then are they in condition and are they willing to play hard and play up to the standard that we, we expect? How do you think Will has performed in terms of the intangibles? You know, get the plays called, get the guys lined up, that kind of thing. Just fine. Just fine. How, how, how has Levis been from that perspective, just as far as like taking your coaching and your, your one-on-one work with him? Uh, again, the ball went to where it was supposed to go most of the time. Did it, you know, we'll continue to coach. We explain to these guys, we got to coach the action and not the result. Sometimes that's hard for any player to understand. Like, oh man, I ended up, you know, making a play there, but is it, it, it may not be what we want. So we're going to continue to coach the, the action. Uh, we'll coach him. We'll coach everybody else uh, tonight, tomorrow, and get them some rest. Hopefully, they can reach out to everybody that, you know, all those females <clears throat> that they that are in their life that have helped them get to this point. Tomorrow, we'll remind them of that. Um, 
let them have the afternoon to, to go do that and then come back with our guys on Monday. Yeah, Mel Barnes is what, you know, he grew up as, as a Patriots fan, and he, he mentioned, you, you know, as, as a boy, you signed a, 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 an autographed football for him. Uh, what did you think? Isn't that nice of me? <laughs> Must have caught me on a good day, Will. That's what I told him. Make me feel old? No. I mean, I guess just having kids that are 22 and 21 and a body that feels like crap probably makes me feel old. But um, that is, that's what I think you love as, you know, professional athletes that have to, you know, have a training camp where fans can come out. Um, you know, the, to have the kids, I've told you this before, pictures of Tyler, or, you know, walking off the field with Teddy's, you know, Brewski's kids wearing Tom's shoulder pads and carrying it and, you know, love seeing our coaches bring their, their kids to, to practice. And, you know, Craig Aukerman's kids were here today and everybody else's kids are going to be coming through here in the spring or in training camp. So, you know how much that, that means and how important that is. We lost that ball in a house fire. You, uh, you give them a replacement? It, it, that's actually going to cost them now. Price has gone up since, <laughs> since then. You, you, uh, Those aren't free anymore. You obviously have proven to be a kind of a no nonsense coach. Uh, well, I don't know what that, does that mean. I just try, I mean, I try to, to explain <laughs> things. I try to be as honest with them as I possibly can. And I try to tell them exactly what they're going to need to do to help their situation, which will help the team and it'll help everybody involved. And I think I've gotten feedback that has been positive in the five years that I've been here is trying to be honest with them, trying to be direct with them, uh, not BS them, but then also find the time to, to let loose and not take myself too seriously. And it, if they want to give me crap, they can give me crap. And, and that's what this thing's about. And I, guess I, I guess I guess was leaning to that. That's are, okay. Are you the same guy with the rookies on week one as far as patience goes as than you are with guys as they've been here for a while? I would say that my patience level has probably improved <laughs> over the years, Jimmy. Would you agree? I think that, yes. I just said that to Stretch earlier. I was like, I don't know. Maybe it's just having done it a few years and I explained to him, it's the lineman's going to go the wrong way and he's going to run into somebody and we're going to be running to the right and you're going to go to the left. We're going to fumble a snap. We're going to drop a pass. The coverage is going to be screwed up. I just, those are things that when I wake up in the morning for rookie minicamp, I know they're going to happen. Just like they're happening at 31 other rookie minicamps. Mike, you've uh, got to know Peter and Will, especially a little bit pre-draft. Now that they've been here for a couple of days and you've had conversations with them, what, uh, anything new that you've learned about either one of them? Um, trying to think what Peter's fun fact was. I think Peter said he he fell or something. He had to go, they got picked up in the fire truck or something. I think he, he fell when he was like four. I think he, they said that the other night. Um, no, I mean, it, this is just a process, man. I just, I try to fit in where I can through these meetings and come in. And again, I want to challenge myself to, to be able to go into each and every meeting room and, and, and tell a player um, something that, that may help them. And, and the things that I try to tell them are just much more um, holistic than maybe their coach. Like they're going to get into, their coach is going to get into a lot, a lot of details. And I'm trying to look at it from a 30,000 foot view of, uh, of something that could help them. Thanks, guys.